The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 37, verses 3, 4, 12, 13, and 17 to 28. Genesis 37, reading from verse 3. Let us hear the word of God. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came up to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. Beloved, this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We'll sing the hymn 298, Ancient and Modern 298.
the Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to Matthew chapter 21. Read at the 33rd verse. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew chapter 21 verse 33 to 43 and 45 to 46. Matthew 21 33 to 43 and 45 to 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a press, wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them in the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants who will bring the, those wretches to a wretched end? They replied. And he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord had done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who produce its fruits. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of Christ. Please let us sit. I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll title our reflection this morning on this adage, man proposes, God disposes. Man proposes, but God disposes. Many are the intentions and prayers and designs of human beings, but if God's hand is not in it, it will never come to pass. Um, what matters in life is not the events and the circumstances of life, my dear brothers and sisters, but how we respond to these things. Because with God's help, any situation can be used for our good, even when others intended it for evil. With God's help, any situation in life can be used for our good, even when others intended it's for evil for us. And the story of Joseph gives us a very clear picture about the statement. But in the meanwhile, you know, Joseph was very overconfident and was so self assured because he was the father's favorite son. And he also knew the design of God for his life because in the dreams he had seen what God want, wanted him to be. So he was overconfident and in a way boastful. And in Joseph, Jesus, Joseph's day, everyone had a cloak and the robes were used to keep them warm and bundle up belongings for a trip, to wrap babies, to sit on it. Sometimes the robes were so expensive that they were even used as collateral 
for loans. And the most of the um, roads were knee length. But Joseph was unique and special because the father loved him so much. And he shows his favoritism towards Joseph. And so the already strained relationship between Joseph and his brothers was aggravated. And what will happen then, my dear brothers and sisters? Eventually they had to conspire against him to kill him. But let's put that one aside. Favoritism in families, my dear brothers and sisters, may, not, may be unavoidable. But its divisive effects should be minimized. We should be very careful, especially as parents, when we favor some of our children against others. Yes, our feelings may not be able to change towards a favorite child. But our actions towards the others should be the same as that of the favorite child. Else we'll create a problem for our children, especially when we are gone. So let us be very careful. But in the main, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us can identify with one or more of the hardships that Joseph experienced. Betrayal, how many of us have not been betrayed before? Deserted by family and friends? Yes. Exposed to sexual temptation? Punished for doing what was right? Enduring long imprisonment? And forgotten by those that you have held? Yes, we can't, we can really um, understand these. But if our focus is on God, we appreciate that all these things happen to us, but God in his own wisdom and his own way takes his children out of these and turn them out into a blessing for them. So our whole lives and our whole thoughts and our everything should be focused only on God, my dear brothers and sisters. For men will propose so many things about us and to us but God will surely dispose them. Because he's our God and he will will them for good for us. So in our lesson, Joseph's brothers plot to do away with him and intended to frustrate the will of God and the plan of God for Israel. Now Joseph, the master dreamer, he had been stripped of his garments, thrown into a system to starve to death and later sold into slavery but what happened he became what God wanted him to be in the land of Egypt he saved his people, his family and the Egyptians from famine that is God's plan so whatever people intend for you leave everything in the hands of God my dear brothers and sisters God will turn them out for us because the plans that our God has for us are plans of good, not of evil. And he will bring us to an expected end. Clear as day is from night in the Bible. God will bring everything for his children to an expected end. But when we go into scripture, there are striking similarities in Jesus' story and the son in the gospel that we read they were both loved by their fathers they were both rejected by their people they were both seized and manhandled by their opponents Joseph was sold into slavery and proclaimed dead and the son was dragged outside the vineyard and killed and in these instances what the prophet Isaiah said comes to pass in verse 44 of our gospel reading see I'm laying a stone in Zion a stone that had been tested has been proven as a precious cornerstone as a sure foundation he who puts his faith in it shall not be shaken and it will become meaningful God had laid you as a stone in the midst 
of your family, in the midst of your community, in the midst of your workplace, nothing can shake you. Because he, Jehovah God, is with you. Trust and hope only in him. It's important for us, my dear Christian friends, to note what Joseph did. His positive transformation each towards each setback. Joseph didn't spend his time asking why this is happening to me. What shall I do now? Those who met Joseph were aware that whatever he was and wherever he was and whatever he did, he hoped in God. So what do you do when you are having a setback? My dear brothers and sisters, when we're having setbacks, what do we do? Let us take Joseph's attitude and acknowledge that God is with us and we are his children. And that what happens in our life will be victorious. Because we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Our worst enemies, my dear Christian friends, in this world today are not the fires, the flood, the wild bees, the diseases, the hunger, even the devil or the COVID that we are seeing. Our worst enemies are ourselves, each other. Because more pain and hurt come from people who are close to us than any other source. And the world continues to kill its dreamers out of anger and jealousy. The world continues to kill its dreamers out of anger and jealousy. But Jesus Christ, just like Joseph, was also rejected. However, without Jesus, the human race would also have been dead in sin. The servants rejected the master's son. To reject the master's son was to reject their own source of livelihood. It is a rejection of their own security, a rejection of their own life, and a rejection of their own very status. So let us understand, my dear Christian friends, that God is the sole power behind us who can turn good out of evil. And in the dictionary, God's dictionary, you can't find anything, it is too late or had I known. If God has ordained something for you, it will definitely come to pass. No matter the stiffness of human opposition. If God has ordained it for you, it will surely come to pass. But let us also appreciate and understand that rejection of Jesus Christ, like the rejection of Joseph and the rejection of the Son, through our actions and inactions, will land us in mortal danger. Let us not reject Jesus Christ. Paul of Tarsus says, to reject means turning away from the very source of your life. It's like doing away with a narrow gate and threading along a wider gate. It is losing the essence of your very life and your being. Because God is our being and Jesus Christ is our being. So it's very important that you and I will always continue to um, have that faith in Christ and those who don't know him, who come to know him as their personal savior and walk in his ways. For without Jesus Christ, there's nothing you can do. And thirdly, to reject Jesus is to invite God's wrath and punishment and eternal damnation on yourself. Because God has made Jesus Christ ruler and judge of all. In trying to reach us with his love, God sent Jesus Christ. His perfect life, his word of truth, and his sacrifice of love are meant to cause us to listen to him and to follow him as Lord and Master. And that's what we're trying to do this Lenten season. So let us not ignore God's gifts of his son. Let us trust in God's faithfulness. Because God will consistently and every time bring good out of evil, success out of failure, and triumph out of defeat for us. But it's important for us to just hope and trust in him and walk in his ways. 
May he grant us that grace. May he strengthen us. That we we'll always follow him. Our faith intact. And live as his children. Then, it will come to pass in our days that whatever the evil one has proposed, God will dispose it. And he will bring evil out of the good. Good out of the evil which assail us. Like Joseph, my dear Christian friends, let us hope and trust only in God. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We we'll turn to a time of prayer, my dear brothers and sisters. At this moment of prayer, I ask your prayer of thanksgiving to God, who is the Lord and ruler of the world, for us to worship him and to acknowledge his goodness and mercies towards us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray and ask God to give us the faith which is enduring. So continue to hope and trust only in him. For indeed his plans for us are plans of good, not of evil. And he will bring us to an expected end. Let us not worry ourselves about what man can do to us. For indeed God is with us. And like Joseph, will be victorious. I ask your prayer for this nation on the 64th independence anniversary for Ghana to be a nation under God for us as a people to seek after righteousness to live disciplined lives For our worldview not to be on materialism. For honesty in public life. Let us pray also for peace in this nation. As we pray for peace, let's pray for justice, equity and fairness. Let's pray for the leaders of our nation, His Excellency Nana Danko Akufado, and His ministers who will be sworn in, that they will lead this nation on the path of righteousness, freedom and justice, truth and honesty, that by their example, this nation will be transformed. And all our developmental agenda will be achieved. I ask your prayers, my dear Christian friends, for us to join in healing our world of the hatred, the pain, the neglect, the indifference, the slander that there is. Let us pray that God will help us as individuals, as a church, to care and be responsible for each other too. Let us pray for the COVID-19 pandemic, which has assailed the whole world. Let's pray for God's intervention. Let's pray against misinformation, propaganda, and others, which will create a problem for any who would want to go for the vaccines. Let's pray for truth and honesty and transparency. Let us pray for those 
frontline staff who are still risking their lives. And let us pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them. Let's remember Uncle Winifred Kukwa and everyone celebrating birthday and anniversary. Let's remember the sick, the sick among us. Finally, let us pray for ourselves. Let's pray for our health. Let's pray for our jobs and our businesses. Let us pray for our families. Let's pray for our friends and siblings. Let us pray for our Christian standing, our standing in Christ. Let us pray. Eternal and almighty God, you hear prayer. And you answer prayer. Because you are true to yourself and true to your children ever faithful to us we have prayed in all humility and we beseech you father to answer our prayer to your glory and for our good we ask this through christ our lord amen the lord be with you let us bless the lord please bow your heads and ask for god's blessings Lord, help your people to seek you with all their hearts. Bless them with your heavenly gifts. And in your mercy, make them ready to do your will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest and remain with you this day, throughout the weekend, and always. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Recessional hymn 281. Hymn 281.